I, I think it'll be okay if you even if you wanted to share it with your clients or you know with uh, you know people that might be interested in in knowing this information. Let's see. Looks like I lost Joe Di. Get him, get him back in here. Joe, you might have to activate your microphone again. All right, cool. Sorry about that. I saw this little box on my desktop, and I was like, oh, I've never seen that little box before. I wonder what happens when I exit out, and it happened to be this software. So, <laughs> That's a good start. Classic, classic MacGruber, yeah. All right, all yours. All right. So, all mine, all right. So I guess we'll kick this thing off. I was expecting a few more people, but uh, let's rock and roll. And welcome, everybody. Excited to see Chris Rutz out there, a few other people. Thanks for coming on tonight. I'm hoping to um, answer a lot of your questions, but also just kind of give you insight into the philosophies and things we use, kind of architecting this year. And, and also, hopefully, you guys leave with some little insider knowledge that you can share with people maybe before it gets released. All right, so we're going to identify some of the changes to the sport this year. Uh, as you guys have probably noticed over the last couple of years, sport has been a major focus. And uh, this year we really made you know a lot of decisions and pivoted a lot of things uh, with 2019, 2020, and beyond in mind. So um, I think some of the changes that we make, um, you know, they influence different people in different ways. But um, I think no matter no matter who's influenced by it, I would just always try to realize we're always trying to make the best decisions for sport and um, you know with me and my role kind of in sport I look at Spartan you know I look at us as the sport of OCR and, and you know I know that there's a broader sport but I also feel that you know our place in this sport is very important and and we kind of pave the way and chart the course for many of the changes that hit that happen so uh, I really take that pretty seriously and try to make decisions uh, that will that will do just that. So um, we're making decisions for Spartan Race, but we're also making decisions for sport. So we're going to identify some of the changes we made. We're going to dive into uh, age group a little bit. You know, this this was um, age group evolved from the competitive field that we launched a couple years ago, um, and I think it's I think it's the right direction. It's young. We'll get into the details of it. It's going to continue to kind of proliferate and grow. More age groups will be added over time, I'm sure, um, but I think it was a great decision. We're already seeing some positive changes just in the in the in the matter in which people register for the race. So excited to share some information there. Series and championships. Uh, we have some new series and new championships this year that I think will be um, kind of compelling offerings for for athletes, for coaches, and and groups. Kind of looking to pave their way in this sport, different ways to kind of involve yourself. Um, you know, we've got the trifecta and the U.S. Championship Series, but uh, there's a few other series and championships so I think you guys will be excited about. Um, we made some changes to the Global Point Series, um, and that's sort of the result of the changes in series and championship. We also made a lot of prize money changes. So um, I'm going to go through some of the domestic prize money changes. Um, there are prize money changes globally, but... For the purposes of this talk, uh, I'm not going to go into as much detail globally because some of those are yet to be determined. Um, but we'll give you an idea based on the U.S. And then we'll have a Q&A with you guys. Um, I want to kind of hear your questions that go unanswered throughout this talk. And uh, Dr. J and I will answer any and all of those questions that we possibly can. All right. So a couple of months ago, um, I don't know, man, maybe it was a no, nah, it couldn't have been a year ago. Maybe it was six months ago. Um, I drew this on a whiteboard at about 9.30 at night at, in headquarters in Boston. <laughs> and I think that uh, in 2017, you know, we had the U.S. Championship Series as we've had. And then we had a few other kind of series and championships around the globe that we were pushing our licensees to create. Sorry, I'm going to take an occasional sip of Beat Elite. I hope that's okay. So we drew this on a whiteboard, um, and it it really came to fruition. And what this is, 
you know, as a sport, we have to lead into a world championship. That's truly a world championship. And, you know, I think one of the things about other really great events um, that have kind of grown in the direction that we are is that all their events, you know, lead to one place. All roads lead to Rome. And um, sometimes in sport, you know, it's um, I think in years past, we've allowed people to qualify for world championship at almost every race on the planet. And I think as we mature and grow, we kind of want to we want to gate our world championship a little bit more than that. And one way to do that is to create standalone championships in each region around the world. So uh, kind of moving out from the world championship, we've got five, Asia Pacific, Latin America, Europe, and the Middle East, and of course North America in these standalone regional championships. And um, what these are, these are the, um, the biggest event of the year in the region. You're going to see who is, who is the top athlete in the region. Feeding those standalone regional championships, we now have these national series. So for the last four years, we've had a U.S. championship series in the United States. Now these national series have been, you know, we've popped them up just about everywhere, and there's about 15 of them in all uh, coming in 2018. Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and the Philippines. So just kind of as a quick example. All of these are based on a five race series. Uh, some of them will end up having only three, um, but you'll see that some countries like Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and the Philippines, in order to get their five races, they were kind of conjoined into a single quote national series. Um, so if you see things like that, it's like, hey, that's not, there's four nations there. Uh, it's just to reach the adequate number of races for a series. Um, but we're excited about these. So each of these are or a, ideally, you know, some of them will be a three race series, but most of them are five race series. There's 15 of them, and each of them will crown a series championship in that region, that nation. Regional championships, they crown a regional championship, uh, a regional champion, and that feeds the world championship. So when you get to Tahoe in years past and the world championship this year, when you get there, You'll have these regional championships. You'll have the regional series championship uh, champions. Uh, and so you'll have these winners through, from around the globe that will really kind of help the sport, again, proliferate. And also I should mention that within each of these, there is elite and age group uh, champions. So super excited about that. But wanted you guys to see kind of this 10,000-foot view of what we're trying to do here because especially in the United States where I think a lot of you are located – um, we're so close to it that it's hard to remember what's out there. You know, we'll have 200 races this year and only, only 60 are in the U S. So, um, it's, it's sometimes good to kind of look at the global, the global view here. Go ahead, doc. All right. Now, like I said, you know, we've had Elite and we've had Open for a long time. Uh, we launched Competitive a couple of years ago because we knew that we needed something between those two groups. Uh, when Elite really started to grow and get popular, we knew that the, uh, the, our ability to kind of rank that or judge that and, and, and monitor that for making sure people had 30 burpees, that whole thing had to grow. Um, and then, you know, what's interesting when we only had a lead and open at times, you know, the line between those two things was a little blurred and, and all of a sudden, you know, there was someone at five o'clock at night that had been out there for 10 hours, uh, you know, getting really beat up because they, uh, you know, they did 29 burpees or something by a volunteer or something else. So, um, with the, with the sort of advent of competitive, um, it allowed us to kind of create an environment where somebody like myself, to be honest, I have no delusions. I don't think I could go win a Spartan race. But um, the the idea of competitive a couple of years ago would say I want to be held to the same standard as Hobie Moat, uh, Hobie Moat, uh, Cody Moat, who just texted me. That's why I used him as an example. Um, I want to be held to that same standard as as the pros. But but I have no delusions that I'm going to win this thing. Um, and that really kind of became became popular. And it also allowed us to kind of take it a little bit easier on the people that were in the open wave, that were doing this for other reasons, that were doing this as a team, um, and really allowed them to kind of allow, allowed everybody to get what they needed out of this thing. 
the issue is the competitive age group um the competitive age group sort of um uh, uh construct um had its limitations you know we still had a sport that we wanted to evolve and we still had goals you know one of the stated goals of joe has always been to get into the olympics and so we felt like we needed a, a a better way to kind of bridge that gap to be honest we had masters category in in the elite wave and it was kind of interesting because one day we just kind of said you know we currently you know we only have one age group right now you know if you're if you're 40 plus or you're anyone else there's really there's two age groups there's under 30 that typically win and there's over 40 that are that are in masters so we decided to blow out this this age group concept um, with the idea initially from Joe this was kind of that Olympic push which is why you see some bias towards the younger age groups I think that when we look at our current uh, sport there's a lot of racers in the 30 to 49 category um, and I you know a lot of people have feedback around that 10 year gap there and I would say that you know in the future we can always add more age groups we can always split age groups as the kind of uh, concept grows and as these waves get filled up but what the idea of this age group process was really around is growing a sport that kids could be nurtured in uh, as they go through school as they enter college and uh, and set us up for a an Olympic push at some point maybe in 2024 or beyond um, so super exciting that was kind of the the start here um, and what we're beginning to see is, is great and that from an elite perspective you know many of you know I kind of managed pro team and and some of our um, sports show and one of the big things that I'm looking forward to to this doing is helping people is to actually reduce the number of folks in the elite wave um, you know when we look at our sport you know the women typically run second and when there's a lot of people that that ran elite just to you know run early in the morning or something like that it really makes their their sport challenging they got to make their way through 200 people um, that maybe shouldn't have been in that that category um, in order to run their race and so um, I think one thing that the age group as coaches as people working with people that are registering for this sport and hopefully taking it really serious um, help people kind of self-identify and and kind of understand where they should be because I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot of people and we're already seeing this kind of in the US and abroad a lot of people trickling from age group or excuse me from elite into age group which is super exciting and on the flip side I think as coaches really getting people to move from open into age group is also an important thing um, I think anybody that is um, is is timed just a little bit you know when we look at programs like CrossFit or or other kind of these uh, other constructs that have kind of really grown they kind of leverage that desire for people to be competitive not only with other people but with themselves and I think this age group category it's you know it's it's holding you to a high standard but it allows you to really compete in a really safe space um, and I think it could be extremely motivating I know you know, as I kind of dabble a little bit more in just coaching a few people here just for fun, um, I'm going to really push them into age groups. So we're seeing a lot of the, the people from elite that maybe were aggressive in registering that way in years past. We're seeing them trickle into age group and we're seeing a few trickle from open to age group. But I think that's the big push. Um, I think that's the big push that we can use to really get our clients uh, enjoying themselves and staying motivated for the future. Go ahead, Doc. All right. In terms of the nitty gritty, um, you know, the age group categories, they are held to the same standards as the elite wave. So you're going to have officials on site. You know, if you do 29 burpees, you're going to be penalized. Um, and there is no kind of cross pollination. So if someone in age group ends up running the best time of the day, they're not eligible for elite awards and vice versa. Um, there are unique point series for both the elite and the age group categories so if you're an age group athlete all your races will be judged according to that even if you were to you know kind of run a time that was competitive in the elite wave at one point um, or another um, age group is age group they're their own kind of constructs um, and there is no prize money for age groups there may be non-cash prizes at some point but um, there is no cash prize for age group go ahead doc all right. I'm sure you guys will have some more questions on that. We'll kind of um, we'll touch on that at the end. 
All right, now, this is super exciting. You know, as we kind of grow, as we talk about kind of people being motivated and, and kind of having a series or a, um, a series of events to kind of focus on, to, to, to center their training around, um, we've got a lot of options domestically this year and around the world. And here they are, the Honor Series. These are races. Right now, there's five of them at military bases. Uh, anybody that does three or more of these Honor Series events receives a special uh, plaque. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so anybody that does three or more of those gets the special plaque Delta Wedge. Um, it's a it's a tremendous race. Those are typically slightly more challenging sprint races uh, than than you'll standard see more standardly in the outdoor series. Um, and if you haven't done an R series race, you're a ton of fun. Um, stadium series. So most of you guys know about the stadium races that we host. Uh, now what you'll begin to see is that the stadium series is starting to really grow. So we've always referred to it as the stadium series. You'll start to see us refer to it more as a stadium event um, or a stadium race and, and maybe a little bit less the stadium series. And the reason is just like we have 60 races in the United States and five of them in the U.S. Championship Series, um, now that we're growing into more and more stadiums, we'll have about 11 in 2018, we're beginning to elevate specific stadiums um, in terms of prize money and points. So uh, I'm going to get a little bit more into points in a few minutes, but there are three stadium races. Uh, you need to do all three, and they're kind of encapsulated into a mini series. Uh, so these these races, I'm just going to tell you what they are. So if you have a pen, they are City Field, Dallas Stadium, and Fenway Park. And those three stadiums are going to be propped up as this elite series this year. Um, that'll have its own elevated prize money. It'll have its own point structure, and it will crown a victor. Or a um, male and female top contender that'll be um, paid about three thousand dollars for for winning that race if you come in first. I'm going to break out the prize money in just a second, but that's super exciting. The Mountain Series, uh, we're in the process of launching this right now. You guys will probably get it in your email in the next couple of days. There are six races. Uh, you only need to do three or more to be um, a contender in the series, and it's your best four performances. So if you do three, you just get a zero. Um, this, this series is going to kick off in May in Montana, um, and there's about one race per month. Um, it ends just after Tahoe in New Jersey. Uh, those races are going to be really tough. That, that series is presented by the Air Force, so there may be some special bells and whistles at those events. Um, and, um, they're going to be pretty arduous courses. So, um... Yeah, we'll get into the prize money and the point breakout in just a second. Uh, Europe is also launching a mountain series. Uh, the races are um, not yet announced. I don't have them in this deck, but if you're in Europe, stay tuned. There is going to be a mountain series over there. U.S. National Series. Uh, this is the U.S. Championship Series we've had for uh, a couple of years now. It's now the U.S. National Series that we, now that we have 15 around the globe. There's five races. It's your best four performances. So we like to say we drop your best race. Or, you know, if you miss a race, that's fine. Um, next, we have the North American Regional Championship. So we've, we've grabbed Mexico and, and included them in North America. So it's the, it's the best of the best from, uh, from Mexico, the United States, and Canada. Uh, this is a huge event. This event was not in the calendar in years past. It's got about a $60,000 prize purse. And uh, it's going to be quite a spectacle. That race is in West Virginia. If you ran West Virginia last year as part of the U.S. Championship Series, this year the U.S. Championship Series culminates in Utah. And uh, the National Series, National Regional Championship is in um, uh, West Virginia, which is a gorgeous venue. Uh, so that's, it's exciting to launch that kind of standalone regional championship here. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't exist in the past. And and one of the big areas you'll see, and that's one of the big pieces of this, is that when we look at trying to improve sport, there's a lot of things we can do. But one of the big things is more series, more championships, and more prize money so people can really make a living at this at the top of the food chain. Second to that, obviously, we have age groups. And, and the more that we can get people kind of competing 
in various um, series and championships, the more kind of motivated they stay and we can kind of follow in the footsteps of, of companies like Ironman that have done this extremely well. Number six, world championship, uh, stand alone. I'll get into prize money in a minute. I'm going to ruin the surprise for everybody. We're going back to Tahoe, but don't tell anybody yet. All right, Doc, we're good. Now, one of the big pieces of feedback that I've gotten quite often, sorry, beat elite sip. Uh, one of the big pieces of feedback that I've gotten quite often, you know, throughout the year is just the fact that um, our point series can more or less be hacked. So if I'm, a, if I'm a decent athlete and I don't care about prize money per se, I could, and, and I'm really focused on the point series, I could go out and and run, you know, the Boston Sprint that's not on TV. It's not a huge race for a lot of top athletes. I could go run in, in Georgia or something like that and kind of move my way up the point series because in years past, all the races, you know, based on distance were more or less worth the same number of points. Um, what we're kind of doing now with points is adding these multipliers. So within each series, I'm going to speak a little slower just so it's clear. Within each series, every race is 300 points, okay? So in other words, in the three race stadium series, each of those stadium events is worth 300 points. And whoever has the closest to 900 points at the end of it wins. Now, when one of those races is removed from the stadium series, so if I were to just run one of those higher tiered stadium events in the context of a race calendar I'm making up myself, and I just went to the one that was closer to my house, there was more competition at that stadium. There was a higher profile race. It was on TV. Uh, so when that 300 point race within the stadium series is applied to the global points, there's going to be a 1.25 multiplier. So a stadium series race is usually um, 288 points. So with the 1.25 multiplier, I don't even have it in front of me, but it's um, 340 or something in that neighborhood. So it'll be slightly more points in the global scheme of things in the global point series than any other stadium race. Uh, the mountain series has the same multiplier. So if you run Montana, uh, it's going to be a couple of more points than if you run uh, Ohio uh, in terms of beasts. The U.S. National Series, which is our most competitive uh, series this year, uh, that's got a one and a half multiplier. So again, if you're competing in elite or age group within the series, every race is 300 points. It makes it easy to broadcast. It makes it easy to talk about points. It makes it makes for easy math. But once one of those races is removed from the series, so if in the context of your global championship, or excuse me, your global point series, you know, maybe you live in uh, the Southeast and, and you're running um, one of the national series races and not all of them, uh, that one will be worth one and a half times points. So 450 points to the top contender um, in that light, which is exciting. The North American Regional Championship is going to be almost, you know, it's going to be 1.75 times points. So um, almost double a standard race. And that's going to be a highly competitive event. Um, I'd urge you guys all to come out. World Championship, standalone, it's double point race. So in, the, in years past, we haven't really issued points um, at Tahoe uh, for global points. This year, the entire point structure is going to change slightly. And um, Tahoe will be included in the points chase, so it's going to be worth 600 to the top top spot. Uh, it's worth double points. Go ahead, Doc. All right. Now, like I said, one of the big things this year um, was sport. So this is elite prize money. Um, if anybody is coaching top athletes. Um, Here's, here's what they're after. So these stadium and mountain races, uh, these top six mountain events and top three stadiums, uh, the individual races have been bumped up from 500 to first to 800. Um, and now all of our series and championship events are paying 10 places deep um, in the elite field. The winner of the series, both stadium and mountain, uh, is starts at $3,000, works your way down to 100 bucks for 10th place. Go ahead, Doc. 
National Series, um, same same prize to first place as last year, um, but again paying ten deep instead of five, a little bit more money on the line, uh, and then bumped up the series pay a little bit too. Anywhere from eight thousand to a hundred bucks if you if you place top ten in the series. Uh, North American Regional Championship uh, starting at twelve thousand dollars, so almost as valuable as Tahoe uh, in years past. Uh, this year, uh, $12,000 to first place, down to 300 for 10th. And World Championship prize money is next, and that's really been bumped up. Uh, second place now play, pays what, fifth, what first place has paid in years past. Um, first place starts $20,000, and you get $1,200 for coming in 10th. So um, really uh, took a step up in terms of prize money. We wanted to kind of elevate that elite sport. Um, as much as we did kind of carving the competitive out for the age group. So it's a slightly different scale, but it's it's the same kind of type push um, in both areas. Go ahead, Dot. I think we're just about there. Um, great, just a few quick words. Um, sorry, I'm just reading some of the comments over on the side. Um, so I wanted to give you guys two a quick update. So the Spartan Pro team that I've kind of been working with over the last couple of years, we're changing a lot of things about that. Uh, really right now, one of the big things we're doing um, is really trying to grow, just grow this sport. That's why we're throwing so much money into prize money because we want to attract more athletes and we want to kind of grow this, um, this system more or less like the minor leagues in baseball. We want to develop this farm system. So What's really interesting is the pro team is actually going to be shrinking this year. So traditionally, we've had 20 people on the team. Uh, this year, it, it could be as few as six. Um, but beneath that pro team, we're, having, we're, we're really looking to grow this farm system. And this is going to give a lot more people the opportunity to become a Spartan pro. Um, so as you guys are training athletes, you've never needed to push them harder to get out and kind of show their stuff because... We're really looking to grow um, to grow this sport, to get as many athletes kind of into the fold as possible, to create an environment where athletes can really make real money in this sport um, and, and have fun doing it. So, so I look forward to kind of having you guys, if you guys are working with athletes, um, send them our way. If there's an athlete that is a, you know, a top athlete from another sport, let us know. We'll try to get them in, maybe give them a couple free races to get their feet wet. Um, but definitely kind of keep your eyes peeled. And on the age group front, this is, again, this is huge. As a coach or trainer, the age group is a, is a huge opportunity. I know for me, if I was still back in the gym training people, um, the age group category, it's just such a, a fun way to kind of um, put, your, put your fitness to the test. And I think that um, if you guys create, you guys can create programs, you can create teams, you can create whatever you want, but I think you can use your creativity and really use age group as a as a court of a sort of place to hang your hat. Because I'm sure most of your clients maybe fall in that category. Maybe they're uh, maybe they're in open and they're thinking about moving into age group or maybe they're age group right now. But um, whatever we can do to keep people motivated, keep us posted on what you're hearing, hearing kind of on the grassroots and um, and um, yeah, let's uh, let's evolve this thing. Let's keep this sport kind of on the trajectory it's heading in. All right, um, that's my last slide. So I'm good opening it to Q and A. Um, I don't know if Dr. J wanted to say a couple, few words, but okay. open mic night. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Take uh, answer some of these questions, I guess. All right. What was the fourth? What was the fourth group of the Asian, uh, Asian regional series? So, Doc, you could look back in the slides and, and pull down the different, um, or maybe go back to that second or third slide if you don't mind, kind of go through this. So, Japan, Korea, I think is a, a fourth group. So, China, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan. Will Spartan Race USA have anything to do with the Latin American calendar? Uh, we've got a, a couple of new licensees in Latin America. Um, you can see here Chile and Brazil are being developed in 2018. Of course, Mexico is too. Um, we are helping. There's a licensee and we have a regional director down there, so we'll see. 
There's a question about pro. Is the Spartan pro team a worldwide movement or just in the U.S.? So, there's a lot of questions. Keep those questions coming in, guys. I'm kind of losing track of them. So, the Spartan pro team, this is really interesting, and we'll kind of give you guys the insider scoop. So the Spartan Pro Team started a bunch of years ago because we really wanted to kind of promote sport. So in order to promote sport, we created a pro team because a sport has pros. Um, it, was, it was a way to really kind of hang our hat on the fact that, of course, this is a true competition. There are now athletes that come out and run X many races a year and, and make a living doing it. When interest started to come up internationally, you know, in my opinion, um, I think that when we look at sport and we look at the Spartan Pro Team, my fear was um, that scaling the the construct that we had created here um, might be cumbersome in terms of the growth of sport if we did it around the world. In other words, um, the the lifeblood of this sport are the athletes in it, and um, we want athletes to have an opportunity to shine whether or not they're you know on our team or not so um, we are promoting a global athlete initiative um, we're promoting the kind of growth of professional Spartan racers around the globe but I anticipate that globally it may not be referred to as the Spartan Pro team if that makes sense will there be awards for age group or just elite there will be awards for age group. Um, there's no cash, but there are podium ceremonies and um, and, and awards for age group, yes. And yes, there will be series awards as well. Mark says, do age groups run in different races as elite or just scored differently? So. Age groups run the exact same race to the exact same standard as an elite athlete. They just go to right at, so it's elite men, elite women, then we begin age groups. Age groups will have a few different waves, but um, all the specific age groups will run together. In other words, all the 30 to 39 year olds will run at the same time. Coach says, um, is there a matrix with all the races in the respective series? Uh, not yet. So a lot of these series, a lot of this information hasn't been announced yet. It'll be announced in the next couple of uh, days and maybe across the next week. So uh, sit tight. The Mountain Series begins in Montana. There's one race per month that ends in Jersey shortly after Tahoe. So you can kind of do the math if you look for really crazy mountain towns like Colorado and Vermont as an example. Christina says the notion was brought up with coaches running with people on course. Will there be a different? Uh, will there be a discount for that eventually? Yeah, stand by. Joe DeSena um, created an initiative, and and it's still being built out to get you guys helping more people on course and creating an environment where that's you know appealing to you a little bit like the open house project that we have currently. So uh, Christina, stay tuned. Mike says, well, there'll be coins this year. Yes, there will be coins. There may be, it may be primarily a, um, a digital um, qualifier. Um, and the way that this works, and I'm glad this question came up, is that you can no longer, you can no longer qualify for the world championship at any race on the globe. So at any race in North America, you can qualify for the North American, or excuse me, uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. At any race in the North in North America, you can qualify for the North American Regional Championship. But you can only qualify for the World Championship at either a National Series race or the North American Regional Championship. So I'll say that again. Races in the United States that are not part of the National Series can qualify you for the North American Regional Championship but they cannot qualify you for Worlds. The only place to qualify for Worlds, formerly we gave out coins at every race on the planet, now the only way to get a quote coin or qualify for the World Championship is to run a National Series race 
not a mountain series race, not a stadium race, but a national series race or compete in the North American regional championship. How will the waves of age group competitors be started? So based on the number of age groupers in that particular race, that'll dictate the number of waves that are required to, to get them where they need to go. But all the age groups will be contained into single heats. So in other words, 14 to 17 will all be together. Um, 18 to 24 will all be together. Chris said, once you sign up for elite for one race, you would not be able to do race age group. So if you, I think I understand the question, uh, Chris Ann. Um, if you sign up for elite today and age group tomorrow, that's fine. But if you register elite, don't just jump into the age group that day. Okay. But if I run my first race of my season elite, um, it doesn't mean I have to run elite all year. Yes, Chris Retz has a question. Can you talk about qualifying for the World Championship racing age group versus elite? So each of these events, um, for each age group, and I'm so sorry, Chris, we're not putting this in there, but I can probably dig it up quick. Each age group has a specific number of qualifying spots at um, for the World Championship. So in other words, each national series race um, it's between five and 10 spots for each age group. So some age groups will have up to 10 spots and others will only have five. Um, so I will look for that. Maybe we can send it around or post it in the Facebook group, but I have those specifics, of course. There will be age group world championships, yes. Uh, champions, excuse me. Mark. Boss man, how many competitors will be eligible to compete in the age group division per age group? For example, 40 to 49. Um, technically, it's going to be capped at about 200, 250, um, but it's really dependent on the entire volume of age groupers um, at a given race. Brad, what's the real incentive to run age group? Um, pros and cons. So, I mean, to me, I would run age group myself because I would say, do I want to, you know, do I want to come in 200th place or do I want to potentially podium in 30 to 39? Um, so it's, it's just kind of calibrating the competition um, so that you can kind of have the most success as an athlete. Where do you see officiating going, growing the series as well as the age groups now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's Officiating is going to be a, um, a job that we constantly evolve and that we constantly grow. Um, it's, we're going to be doing more and more to attract great talent. We, of course, have our obstacle specialist course. We have um, more incentives kind of coming down the hatch to get, honestly, some of you guys potentially out there. So um, stay tuned. You know, I, I don't know if anybody remembers the marshalling militia thing that I had sent around a couple of months ago, but um, we're really doing what we can to, um, to kind of create an environment where there's more and more volunteers to help us out and help with officiating. Uh, Ultra will continue to have its own world championship. So, um, yes, yeah, stay tuned for that announcement. Chris Ann, if you're 50, you get beat up. You get beat up, course full of open runners. So, there'd be about 15 minutes between the final um, age group wave and uh, the open racers. So hopefully they don't catch up. Coach Justin, we know that eventually we'll need to add more age groups. Uh, when that happens is to be TBD.
Reagan, um, does age group qualification trickle down? So age group, the way that this works, um, it's your age on race day, okay? So if your birthday is in June, I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. That's what, that's what Regan's question was. Um, so the way that this works, no, it's a common question. So if I'm 39 right now and I qualify or, or let's say I don't qualify for Tahoe at the U.S. Championship Series race that I run, but two days before Tahoe I turn 40, and I say, man, I would have been able to qualify um, if I ran in 40 to 49 when I was 39. Um, so there's this little, like, a lot of sports do December 31st or the date of the final race. Um, but we are, due to some other outs outside kind of variables, we just have to keep it with race day age. So there is going to be a handful of people that that negatively affects, but we hope it'll be, we hope it'll be minimal. And, Regan, um, for your other question from the other day, um, the 14 to 17 year old age group is still required to do the standard course. Um, so if if you know a kid, obviously there are heavy obstacles, and um, they're just going to have to be prepared for some burpees. Michael, uh, Spartan branded gyms and things uh, potentially. Um, stay tuned. Right now it's just Spartan Strong, but um, we'll see what comes down the hatch. There's a lot of opportunity. A lot of ideas. Wiley says, can I only compete in Mexico? Uh, no. Come on up. I think I might have got them all. Did I miss anybody? So Mike Confer, physical coins may not be given. Um, it's going to be more of a digital qualifying uh, this year for, yes, age group and elite. Any other questions? Feel free to drop them on if, or repost if I missed your question. I think I got them all. Cindy, yes. So digital, uh, that's an email. Um, it's also um, uh, some kind of social uh, badge they're working on. Boss man, yeah, we're continuing to create podium shirts. Um, you've probably seen athletes with their names on the back of their shirt. We're going to continue that. Um, that may trickle into age group. We'll see. Um, but I do anticipate uh, merchandise and things like that associated um, with age group, first elite, etc. April, there is an SGX Facebook page, yes. Um, Facebook, it's SGX alum. I give you some love, boss man. <coughs> Will the rules be more flexible for the 50 plus category because of some limitation? No. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, the age group category. You know, if we look at Iron Man, you still got to run 26.2. Um, Alan, yeah, SGX Summit, the idea has come up a couple of times. Definitely in favor of it. I think it's just a matter of. Um, I think it's just a matter of uh, getting it off the ground and, and really understanding where is the best place to activate it and having the resources to do so. Marco Caromba, great to see you, my friend. Um, Spartan Strong will be rolled out internationally. In fact, um, ping me um, offline and uh, we can talk about that. I'd love to take it to South Africa. Mike, uh, will Fenway be a championship stadium event? So Fenway is the final race in that three-race stadium series. So it will be um, slightly more uh, championship-esque. Uh, it's just the culmination of the series. 
Um, and I will say that it is very likely that at least one of those three stadiums is broadcast live on Facebook. Reagan, yes, there's a roll down. There's a roll down on qualifiers. So if um, if Regan comes in ninth place, but four out of the five people in his age group already qualified at another race, then he would eventually trickle down and get himself a qualifier coin. Sarah, I don't know exactly uh, what the awards are going to be. There's no cash awards. There will be plaques and things like that. But if there's outside awards, like from sponsors and things like that, it's yet to be determined. Um, Kevin, uh, is it known which races are series championship races for each category? So I guess I don't know the um, – I, I went through a few of them. Um, so City Field, Dallas Stadium, and Fenway are the mini stadium race series. Uh, the Mountain Series begins in Montana and ends in New Jersey right after Tahoe, and there's a race per month, so you can kind of fill in the gaps there. Um, that's being, uh, I believe that's being broadcast about a week from today, so I won't ruin the whole surprise, but... Um, Regan, I only said ninth place because I assumed you would have to repeat bucket carry. Christina, the roll down. So the roll down, you know, if there's five spots, there's five qualifying spots, it's going to go as far as it has to um, based on the number of people that have qualified. But to your point, yeah, later in the season, you know, it's kind of my time to shine. That's when I might actually have a chance because so many of the athletes have already qualified. So it'll, it goes as deep as it needs to. Sure thing, Alan. Michael, uh, the Ultra will have a standalone championship. So this year it was in Iceland. Um, stay tuned for next year. And yeah, the qualifiers will be an Ultra finish throughout this year. Welcome. Anything else? Get those questions in. Jody, I, I had a question for you. You mentioned um, that Tahoe was going to be the uh, world championship, and then you, you kind of said, uh, don't say anything about it. You, you really want coaches to keep quiet about that for now and let Spartan announce that? Yeah, you know, it's not the end of the world if you leak the Tahoe thing. I think it's pretty – I think you can kind of discern that that's what it's going to be if you just spend some time on the website – um, so I'm not that worried about that. So thanks, Dr. J. But, um, I mean, don't like post it on Facebook, I guess. But if you're kind of hanging out, you can kind of like wink at your clients and be like, I know where the world championship is going to be. But yeah, don't like post this stuff on Facebook. Any of the kind of insider knowledge, um, don't, don't go posting it. But if you want to like kind of get some chatter around your gyms and stuff, that's cool. Adam, uh, bucket commercials? I don't know. We, we might actually uh, we might have to make another one of those. Robin and Corey, questions about prizes um, to be determined. Um, I know in years past we've given out T-shirts and sweatshirts and season passes, so there are still prizes of the sort, uh, specifically what they are and how deep they go. Um, is going to evolve a little bit, so to be determined. Hey guys, so I'm just this Tim's got a longer question here. I'm just gonna take a second. Will there be 
Will there be a notification that you qualify for reading that? Any of the, yeah, all the qualifier stuff, Tim, you'll be notified. So after the event, you'll be notified if you've qualified for Worlds or or a national championship. Excuse me, a, re, a regional championship. All right, uh, Robin Fontaine's fight, uh, <laughs> fighting, typing again. The age group starts. Uh, there will be some mixed starts, yes. Um, again, there's based on the numbers that we have in the age group, um, it's not 100% consistent. So in other words, every race, some races, every age group is going to be filled. And other races, some age groups won't have as many folks in it. So there will be some mixed gender starts for sure. All righty. Unless Regan has any more questions. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I actually, uh, let's see, that's a tough question, Tim. Um, are Australian athletes tougher than Americans? Generally, maybe. <laughs> it depends on where you're doing this presentation. You know, if you're in Australia, you might have to say yes. But here in the U.S., we're going to say no. <laughs> Michael, uh, all the series info will be released in the next week or so. So that's the three-race stadium series, the six-race mountain series. Um, all the national series stuff is already out there. Um, yeah. Yes, open is after elite and age group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I got my favorite shirt on tonight. Awesome. I think uh, I think that's a wrap, DI. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate you taking the time tonight to hang out and listen to me talk for a while. I know how hard that is. So just um, keep doing what you're doing. Feel free to reach out with questions. Uh, let's um, Let's get this year going, man. I think that this year is going to be just – incredible for all of us so stay in touch stay active on the facebook group and, and let's rock and roll aru aru <laughs>